Let's get this show on the road. So prior to every stream, I think we're going to do a countdown. Like you see, it should be in the top left corner and question always is what do i have in the countdown could it be gameplay could it be something something else that's self-serving in some regard but i figure that you're probably only going to be here if you have if you care what i have to say and if that's the case then i have a responsibility to slowly unveil who i am why i'm creating this channel what my motivations are what i'm inspired by um, basically sharing myself with you the best way I know how. And so for these intros, for these countdowns, we are going to have a short story time. And each one of these is probably going to be, well, this is probably going to be the longest, and subsequent ones will be shorter. But eventually, I hope over time, you'll see how all of these pieces come together. Professor Bloom has his own way of doing things. Writing about the higher education in America, he does not observe the forms, manners, and ceremonies of what is called, usually by itself, the community of scholars. Yet his credentials are irreproachable. He is the author of an excellent book on Shakespeare's politics and has translated Plato's Republic and Rousseau's Emile. It will be difficult for nettled colleagues to wave him away, and many will want to do just that, for he is shrewd and meddlesome, as well as learned, and a great observer of what McKennan would call, when he was being mean, the higher learning. But Professor Bloom is neither a debunker nor a satirist, and his conception of seriousness carries him far beyond the positions of academia. He is not addressing himself primarily to the professors. They are welcome to listen, and they will listen because they come under heavy fire, but he places himself in a larger community involving invoking Socrates, Plato, Machiavelli, Rousseau, and Kant more often than he does our contemporaries. And this is the part that I really want you to hear. The real community of man, in the midst of all the self-contradictory simulacra of community, is the community of those who seek the truth, of the potential knowers, of all men to the extent they desire to know. But in fact, this includes only a few, the true friends, as Plato was to Aristotle at the moment they were disagreeing about the nature of the good. They were absolutely one soul as they looked at the problem. This, according to Plato, is the only real friendship, the only real common good. It is here that the contact people so desperately seek is to be found. This is the meaning of the riddle of the improbable philosopher kings. They have a true community that is exemplary for all the other communities. A style of this sort will seem to modern readers marred by classical stiffness, truth, knowers, the good, man. But we can by no means deny that behind our objection to such language is a guilty, conscious, a guilty consciousness of the flimsiness and not infrequently the trashiness of our modern talk about values. The sentences above are taken from the conclusion of Bloom's book. Parting from his readers, he is at his most earnest. He writes in a different vein when he is discussing the power of professional economists, the separation of modern science from the natural philosophy that preceded it, the phenomenon called cultural relativism, or the real, the bottom line significance of an MBA degree. He often flashes out provocatively and wickedly, Speaking of the place of the humanities in the universities, he calls them a submerged old Atlantis, to which we turn again to try to find ourselves now that everybody else has given up. The humanities are like the great old Paris flea market where, amidst the masses of junk, people with a good eye can find castaway treasures. Or else, they are like a refugee camp where all the geniuses driven out of their jobs and countries by unfriendly regimes are idling. The other two divisions of the university have no use for the past. When he is not busy with the nature of the good, he can hit with the best, or should I say the worst of them, very hard. As a scholar, he intends to enlighten us, and as a writer, he has learned from Aristophanes and other models that enlightenment should also be enjoyable. 
To me, this is not the book of a professor, but that of a thinker who is willing to take the risks more frequently taken by writers. It is risky in a book of ideas to speak in one's own voice, but it reminds us that the sources of the truest truths are inevitably profoundly personal. Bloom tells us throughout this book, I have referred to Plato's Republic, which is for me the book on education, because it really explains to me what I experience as a man and as a teacher. Academics, even those describing themselves as existentialists, very seldom offer themselves publicly and frankly as individuals, as persons. So Professor Bloom is a frontline fighter in the mental wars of our times, and as such, singularly congenial to me. And if he can be personal, I see no reason why I should remain the anonymous commentator. In his concluding pages, Bloom tells of a student who, after reading of the symposium, said it said that it was hard today to imagine the magic Athenian said that it was hard today to imagine the magic Athenian atmosphere in which friendly men educated lively on a footing of equality civilized but natural came together and told wonderful stories about the meaning of their longing but adds bloom such experiences are always accessible Actually, this playful discussion took place in the midst of a terrible war that Athens was destined to lose, and Aristophanes and Socrates at least could foresee that this meant the decline of Greek civilization. But they were not given to cultural despair, and in these terrible political circumstances, their abandon to the joy of nature proved the viability of what is best in man, independent of accidents, of circumstance. We feel ourselves too dependent on history and culture, what is essential about any of the Platonic dialogues is reproducible in almost all times and all places. This thinking might be what it is all for. That's where we are beginning to fail. But it is right under our noses. Improbable, but always present. And this is the foreword from the book The Closing of the American Mind by Alan Bloom. Copyright, 1987, to my students. And now we return to our regularly scheduled programming. Good morning, good morning everybody. I hope you can hear me okay. And if I crash and burn on my official very first live stream, if I crash and burn, please forgive me because this is my first time doing this, but the first of what I hope will be many, many live streams because inevitably there's a lot more work that needs to go on to make a prototype into a game. And that really is the nature of what I want to do on these live streams. I promised we'd start live streaming and here we are. And... I really hope it's just a few of us to start because it's going to make it much easier for me to get to know you, get to know uh, those of you that are interested in the game that we're making. It's primarily me and Ricardo at this point. It's really me and Ricardo at this point. Um, but also get feedback from a small group of what I'll call friends. And that really gets into the the reading that I did to start this live stream. And every single one of these live streams, we are going to have a theme. Uh, the theme will, at first glance, not seem to be at all related to game development. But that's only at first glance. Uh, because the theme is actually going to be much, much deeper uh, than I would say your typical game development channel. Because, you know, most people come into my channel, if they stop into this live stream, they're going to say, what are you doing? Like, you do tutorials. You're, you're not doing tutorials. Why isn't this a tutorial? And that's why I wanted to talk about education. Because, you know, one way of thinking of tutorials is that I'm educating, and that's probably true. Like, how to make a Niagara system... That's education, right? Or how to repair a leaky faucet. But then, oh, so why haven't these grown? That's that's a question. Well, let's not look at them for a while and see if they grow. Um, but the other question really is why 
even bother learning how to make a Niagara system or why even bother to learn how to repair a leaky faucet. Um, and the, really, this is a meditation on the nature of education itself, because what I'm really interested in with these live streams, what I'm really interested in is I want to know what makes a great game because we, we are bombarded today with entertainment. We have so much entertainment. You know, you could go on Netflix at any time and you could watch more on Netflix than you have time in your entire life to watch. And that's just one platform. Um, and that's really the question then. You know, if we have so much entertainment, what makes me think or what makes you think if you're a game developer that you can outperform the masters, outperform the experts? We've got these giant gaming corporations that are making $100 million blockbuster games. So what gives me the gall, the gumption to even attempt to make a game and say like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to do my own thing. Now, maybe there's a, a selfish part of that. And almost certainly, and Carl Jung would say that this, that any motivation that you have, you've got a selfish aspect to that motivation, but then there's probably also a good aspect to that motivation. And at my core, at my core, I really believe that games are good. And the games that I grew up with, the games that I played with my best friends growing up, I treasure those memories, man. I, I love it. And I, I do see the natural progress of becoming an adult. I see that as the progress from experiencing the imagination of others to then embarking within your own imagination to to embark on the journey of making your own imagination into instantiated reality and i mean that in terms of gaming but i also mean that in terms of your life who do you want to be in five years in 10 years um and that's in things like families and marriage it's like what we imagine first we then have to discern through our imagination what gets made into reality and so these live streams, it's, it's really, so it's me testing, but that's just on the surface level. It's really, I want to explore, I want to explore the deeper question of what makes a great game. What, and it's a qualitative question. Um, you have questions that, you know, m most tutorials, or let's say most things related to anything, they only explore upwards. And so what I mean by that is, you have a question like, oh, how do I do an effect that lets, oh, look at all the foliage is grown now. So how do I do an effect in the game where all this foliage can grow, right? So I'm exploring the question upwards. Like I have a problem, I have a problem or a question, and then I'm saying, okay, I'm getting closer and closer to the solution to that question. And with these live streams, I want to explore downwards. So it's like, oh, I have a question, which is, and this was my original question three years ago, which is, uh, can I make a game? And then, and, and the answer to that obviously was no, because I had, you know, so much learning to do. Um, and then you can go upwards with that question. Like, okay, can I, the first thing I tried to do, and this was, this was fundamentally a mistake. First thing I tried to do was to switch out this guy right here with a, with a new character. Um, because the reason I tried that first is because we all think like, that's our self, like that person sitting on the screen, that's me. Like, this is me hiding behind that mask. And you're wrong. It's actually the entire world in this game is a projection of you. That's you. And this right here, this is just whatever consciousness is. This is whatever the entity that's governing the entirety of your mind, you could say. In conventional modern terms, we would say mind. Now, that what, what the mind is is a far more interesting question, which we're going to get into in these streams. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm going all over the place here. So please forgive me. First time doing this. So I'm rambling a little bit. Okay. So I tried the very first thing I tried doing when I was starting a game is I tried switching out this character right here with new character that took me a month to figure out, but that it was, it was the personal nature of the game because I wanted to project myself into this, this, uh, virtual entity, let's say, but then as I learned more about game development, I realized, oh wait, it's it's not the character that is that projection, or it's not that the character that's the creativity, it's 
the totality, the entirety of the game world. But it's not just the game world, right? So it's three dimensional. Sorry, it's four dimensional because it's through time. It's the game experience. All right. So tying this back to why would we want to make games in the first place? So, so that's the exploration downward. Like why would I even want to project myself or my character into a game world? Like what, what is my motivation for doing that? And what I realized, what I realized is that any sort of creative endeavor, and this will become, I think, clear over time, but any sort of creativity, what you're really attempting to do is explore yourself. It's exploring the nature of who you are. Um, now, maybe it's also, maybe it's also the exploration of the world at large, whatever that world is. Uh, but any creativity, any creative action that you have, by the way, we have a lot of fires burning, so I should probably put out those fires. So let me, uh, let me get my staff here. Uh, well, man, I'm, I'm really behind here. So let, let's, let's, Neil, stop talking, start playing. Uh, I need to get some stuff. Yo, what's up, Chad? So, uh, the Friday Morning Nameless is a new friend of mine who I hope we become uh, better friends over time. And so, it's good to see you. I did not expect many people to get up this early in the morning, but uh, I'm, I'm humbled that some people um, want it. No, I don't want fire. What am I doing here? I don't want fire. Okay, let me absorb my fire. We gotta get water. Obviously, we need water to put out fires. Um, I'm humbled and I'm honored that, that you would join me this fine Saturday morning. Merry Christmas! Uh, and in uh, in honor of Grim Grizz, who I don't think is watching, but and nobody knows who Grim Grizz is except Chad, but um, in honor of Grim, I just want to say uh, we are Merry Christmas folks around here, y'all. <laughs> and Merry Christmas, everybody. It's two days away, but uh, if you celebrate, Merry Christmas. And if you don't, you're welcome here too, obviously. Um, and yeah, so I'm putting out some fires. Um, but you know, all, all of that, that's just on the, the surface level of what, you know, what I'm, what I'm doing here is just on the surface level of the game. So, and I, I mentioned this in a previous episode, which if you, if you think of any art from the artist as a projection of that artist, um, then you can start looking at yourself through what you're creating. And what I realized I, I was creating here is there are certain aspects of yourself. There's always, let's say, there's always that snake in the garden. There's certain aspects of yourself. It's those sinful tendencies. Uh, you know, the things that are within yourself that are not good. They're not good. And I think we, we always think of life as this exploration outwards, right? We're, we're understanding the world and we're changing, hopefully changing the world for the better. But I think life is as much about that exploration and journey within in that if, if you look at the best stories that are that exist, and I, I mean stories in terms of TV shows, movies, everything. Um, if you look at those best stories, so there is that exploration outwards in that changing of the external, there's the changing of the outwards world. But the best stories, the best stories have the exploration inwards in it's not even exploration inwards it's transformation inwards so take take the show it's my favorite show i mentioned this on the episode that just came out this morning favorite show of all time babylon 5. so each of the characters at the at season one of babylon 5 if you compare each of those characters at season one to season five they are fundamentally different people like they they are some some are way worse different people and some are way better. And so, some have changed in ways that are like inscrutable. Like you couldn't imagine this character in, in, in episode one, season one being like a certain way. And, and, but the story is such that it's a natural progression of transformation of the character to that point. And the reason I'm talking about this is because that's what games are. Games are a microcosm. They are, they are an example in time, in space, of our entire lives. Um, and, and this is why, so the, the, the question downward when I say like, I wanna understand what makes a great game. 
if if I believe that some games are better than others, and I let me tell you, I played some awful game. Well, I stopped playing that very quickly, but I played some awful games in my time. But if if I believe that some games, and I've played some amazing games in my time, if I believe that some games are better than others, and if I'm making a game, then obviously the question is, what makes a great game? Like that, that fundamentally is the question of game development and game exploration. So th that's the whole purpose of the live stream is we, we gotta, I wanna figure that out. Like I genuinely wanna figure that out. So I wanna figure that out for this game and, and the specifics of this game. But again, that's just surface. So if we could figure that out together now, like anything that I learn in that process, like I want to share that because if I, if I believe that art is good and if I believe that that's what art is, is we are projecting ourselves outward into the world, then, you know, we, we automatically assume that, you know, let's say talking is good, uh, that communication is good, but then why, why is just the, the verbal and the talking good? Like, it, it should be all aspects of our psyche, right? All aspects of ourself that if, you know, Christ, Christ says, for instance, he says, everything that's in the dark will be in the light. It will be brought to the light. And if you have that assumption about yourself, that everything that's within your darkness, within yourself will be brought to the light, then there's no more fear because you're already like fully exposed. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sort of rambling here, but the point is, but that's where art is so wonderful in that you can see through the art, who you are, what you're doing, what your motivations are. And, and it becomes this. So, so in programming, we have this sense of recursion, right? The recursive algorithm, everything in programming is recursive. Everything in game development is, rec I should be playing more and putting out fire. Sorry, but everything. And also there's like tons of disease and we're going to have to burn that out. But this is more interesting than the, than the, than the game, in my opinion, because in programming, we have this thing called uh, tick where, you know, the game is ticking like every so it, so in the top right corner of my screen, right, you see like 60 FPS, like that's a good F that's frames per second, if you're not familiar with game development. So if your game is running more than 60 frames per second, that means your game's running pretty well, it's it's fast enough. And every one of those frames um, uh, is a, what's called tick in game development. And it's this recursive algorithm, it, it's like it's doing everything the game needs to do in this instance in time this moment in time and that's doing it again the next instance and it's doing it again the next instance is recursion 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 and my point is that art is the same way in that you project it out into the world you see it so so you have an output into the world as art you have an input which is you see it or you speak it and then you hear it back from another person um and then it's a recursion it's a recursion and and that is the nature of our life is that you know, if, if you think of your life as a mountain, and, and I think it's the right way to think about it as a mountain, because if, you're, if your life is a valley, right, you're just going down all the time, it's not so good. Like, <laughs> you know, so I, I think the right conceptualization is, is a mountain in that it's like, you want to get to, and this really is, uh, I, I would say for art as well, and for games, like you want to get to the ideal state of that art, of that truth whatever that is, like you want it, whatever that particular art is aiming for, you want to get to the best version. That's the ideal. And that's, that's the platonic ideal. We're going to get into some philosophy stuff uh, on this stream. And I'll try to keep it down to earth. So it's going to make sense in relation to gaming and all that stuff. But, um, you know, like anything you aim for, you're inevitably short of that ideal, you're inevitably not reaching that ideal. But the, the goal is to slowly climb that mountain. And that's, that's at every level of reality. That's at the level of like you brushing your teeth. Like That's at the smallest level. Like if you're brushing your teeth and you're half-assing it, like it's not going to be good. Like it's not going to end up well, you know? So like at every level of reality, if you are, if you are aiming for, okay, we're going to, we're going to make this better. We're going to make this better. But it's that recursive process. It's like you do it and then you get feedback from your dentist and your dentist is like, you are not flossing well. This is how you floss without cutting your gums. That happened to me, by the way. But anyway, uh, so like stuff like that. Like it's this recursive algorithm where we are slowly getting closer to uh, the the ideal. Yeah, okay. I'm going to look at, man, I, I'm terrible at multitasking. I'm going to look at chats. I'm going to put out fires, both literal and figural 
Fig figural, figurative. Yeah, there we go. Um, ain't you kings of a dark? So, so, uh, Chad. Yeah, I, ain't you kings of a dark night kind of dude? Uh, Tetris. Yeah. So Tetris. Let's talk about Tetris for a moment, because that's exactly what I'm talking about. It's like you have problems going on, so it's not fires and disease like you have here, but you have and and the and the speed of that recursion just keeps going, right? It it it, it speeds up. And inevitably you hit your limit. It's like a bandwidth issue, basically, is Tetris. Man, I, I'm, you know, part of my reason doing these streams is looking at uh, my frames per second. So you see my FPS there is now like 45, and it's because there's too much, like there's too much disease and stuff going on. So if I keep letting this simulation run, it's it's not going to be good. Uh, so let let's actually like put out fires, and um, also I should probably plant some new trees and stuff before um yeah anyway i probably need to concentrate on gameplay because this is not gonna go well if i don't concentrate on gameplay yeah exactly chat exactly i'm so chat said there's symbolism here talking about philosophy as, as the world burns here yeah so uh you know basically what i'm doing here is both metaphysically and virtually putting out fires Hopefully. Maybe. That's what I'm aiming for, man. That's the mountain I'm trying to climb. <laughs> and you can see I'm not doing a great job uh, with that because, uh, yeah, obviously things are not going so well in this, in this virtual world at the moment. Um, okay, how about this? I'm going to plant. Let's get some new seeds. So, But I need healthy foliage in order to do that. Okay, so I, I got some, some new seeds, and let's plant. Let's plant down here. You haven't seen this yet. So if you follow the Misfit devlog, uh, you've seen everything up to this, like planting new seeds. And I'm just planting down there because you, you can see those tiny little, uh, uh, whatchamacallits, tiny little foliage there. Um, yeah, so, and I, I haven't gotten to this point in, in game development yet, but each, each one of the types of plants is going to give uh, different powers, depending on the type of plant. Because, so, for example, the, the way I envision this this uh, world inevitably shaping itself up is you're going to have evil forces. Let's say uh, Sauron is, what's the quote? I'm trying to remember the exact quote. Um, Sauron has not yet, or Sauron is not yet able to take on physical form, but his spirit has lost none of its potency. Yeah, that's... That's Gandalf to Saruman. Um, and so I, I envision the evil starting out in gameplay being more ephemeral, difficult to pin down. And inevitably, you as the player, you have to basically carve out your territory. Like you have to say, I'm going to protect this part of the land. I'm going to protect this area. And what that's going to do is it's going to, it's almost going to be like a World War One scenario where you're drawing battle lines. Uh, and and but you're going to be using the things that you're protecting and planting. You're going to be using those to create, and so that's that's what I'm excited to to make happen. Like, how is that creation going to uh, going to occur? Um, yeah. So I think I think the fire is going to take care of the disease automatically here. So I'm not even going to worry about the fire. Um, but also, I, you know, with these live streams, like selfishly, I, I want to just let the game run and see what my FPS does. And then based on like how performance intensive it is, I need to adjust certain things. Um, yeah, so you see like after things burn, you'll see like uh, things disintegrate. Um, yeah, so let me go back to the, the chat here. Uh, so Bruce says, this is the earliest I've been up in months. That's what friends are for, man. Making you wake up early. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> um, let's see. Are there any other topics that I specifically uh, wanted to cover? I, th I think we covered it. I mean, the fact that most gaming channels are about the upward climb, right? Upward the mountain. Like you have a specific, or let me, let me say gaming tutorial channels. You have a specific problem. And you're trying to solve that specific problem. Um... And yeah, you know, wh what what we're gonna do on these live streams is, like I said, we're going down the mountain. We're looking at the base of the mountain. We're looking at like, okay, what's the foundation of the mountain? Like, why are people even creating games in the first place? And what's the whole point? Oh, and and I'll give away. So right here, 
this is going to, what I'm about to say, this is going to be key to whether I can make this game work, like whether people actually want to play this game. And I was just talking to Ricardo about this yesterday, is that um, most, so, so this game is shaping up to be both RTS and role-playing. And you can see the re real-time strategy aspect to it, but there's also going to be a role-playing aspect. Let me, let me get out of my garden here so it can actually grow faster. Um, so most games are both RTS and role-playing. Or sorry, this game is going to be RTS and role-playing. And pretty much every uh, RTS and role-playing game that I know of, like take Minecraft, for example, because I'm, I'm hugely influenced by Minecraft. I think Minecraft is awesome. Uh, but pretty much all those games, they translate like the building, like they all, they all have transformation of the outside world. You know, the outside world is being changed from one thing into another thing. Um, the, oh, by the way, Chad and Bruce, you guys would totally get along. I'm the, I'm the only guy who knows both of you and you guys would really like both, you know, each other. Anyway, so yeah, keep going. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Shoot, you guys got me off my train of thought. So yeah, pretty much every real-time strategy and role-playing game, they transform one thing. It's, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Transform one thing to one thing. And then something we've been debating within, uh, within the corner, and only Chad knows what I'm talking about within the corner. But anyway, that's going to come out over time, Chad. This is like an inside joke that's slowly going to make its way to the outside. But one thing we've been debating within the corner, I would say, is that... So, so here's a question. Is reality fundamentally comprised of stuff, like the object, like this table? Or is reality <clears throat> fundamentally comprised of relationships? Like, is it is it the relationship between atoms that makes the stuff? Like, is the is the connection? So, the reason that this is relevant for the game that we're making here is what what I what I want to do is, um, but but Ch so Chad asked, can a character transform? Metanoia. But Chad, remember, this entire world is the character. The entire world is the character. It's not just this this like you know, do this robot standing here. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Bruce. Yeah. Uh, okay, so is so going back to the question that I was just talking about, is the world primarily based on stuff? Or is it based on relationships? Like is the connection between atoms and people? Is that based on relationship? Or is it primarily based on? Um, and I suspect the answer is relationship. And that's that's a that's a very long uh, exploration process. But okay, the reason that that's relevant is because if the world is primarily, and I mean the real, like the real world, whatever the real world is, right? If the nature of reality is based on relationship, is is fundamentally based on relationship, then a game should be able to emulate that reality, and the emulation could then become a good game because I just I mentioned earlier like every game is a microcosm of reality and so uh so what do I so what's what is the so now let's go upward so I went downward now let's go upward what is the uh pragmatic implication of that realization that the world is primarily based on relationship so I think the pragmatic realization uh is that if you do transformation of objects, so if I want to take, let's say, wood, if I want to take a tree and transform it to wood, if I want to take leaves and transform it into a roof or something like that, right? That That's how Minecraft would typically see it. Like you take this and you transform. Now, Minecraft has recipes too. But what I want to do is emergent behavior, meaning if you take bamboo and you cross that with like vines, you get a net, you know? So, so I want every level of the reality to be cross-referenceable so every everything like this is this is an ideal i don't know how i'm going to pull this off but everything in the game should interact with everything else in some regard and i mean that positively and negatively so like if if i have five fires burning in one spot it should make a mega fire and if i have like multiple mega fires burning in the same spot that should then instantiate the spirit of fire let's say right it brings forth something that is an emergent property an emergent level of reality that's higher and greater and stronger than whatever the 
the previous property is. So, but I also want that in terms of deliberate recipes. So there, there's this concept within mythology of the chimera. I think Luke Thompson was talking about chimera, uh, Chad, maybe like a week ago. Um, just a few days ago, actually. But a chimera, the whole idea myth mythologically of a chimera is you're putting all these things together that don't really go together. And they're trying like, uh, uh. there's this scene in, a, uh, I think it's Ro Robocop, where the guy has, I, I don't have that set up as a clip. I just have um, you know, anyone who's, who's a newcomer. Let me tell you why you're here. This is the first clip I'm playing. You're here because you know something. Yeah, what you know I... you can't explain, but you feel it. I'll tell you why you're here. Um, oh, if anyone is, I don't know how many people are listening at this point, but for anyone out there. is looking at you, kid. Yeah, so I, I got to get used to this whole uh, video board and yeah. And obviously my whole world is diseased here. And I mean that, I, 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 I mean that virtually, not metaphysically, I hope. <laughs> um, but actually, no, let, let, let's go back to the game here. Let's, uh, let me get some fire essence. So you see, you see like the land here is all diseased based on uh, what's been spreading. And let me get some fire, because what we're gonna do with the fire is we're gonna burn all of this out. Uh, but in order to burn it all out, I need healthy foliage to charge up my staff, and it's gonna be difficult to have healthy foliage if everything is diseased and or dead as is the nature of reality. It's very difficult to do the right thing if you don't have the underlying habits, the underlying neuro neurological structure to do the right thing. Um, I know I just got metaphysical there. Uh, okay, let's, let's burn this all out. Let's burn out all the disease foliage, which is gonna lower my frame rate considerably, but you know what, it's gotta go. We have a, uh, we have a sale, everything must go for Christmas. And, uh, yeah, so starting from fire. Let's probably get water. Um, yeah. Oh, look at that. We have our first bug. Yeah. Ricardo, you have to find our bugs. <laughs> I'm just I'm just waving. So I, I think I'm just going to stand here and wave as everything burns. Um, okay, so chat asks, uh, do you have trees whose seeds... Uh, open by fire. That's an awesome idea. That's the emergent. That's the emergent property that that. Uh, I will, yeah. So in, in talking about um, getting feedback on this and uh, having some back and forth. Yeah. So that kind of idea. Uh, those are the ideas that I, I want to. Uh, let's say instantiate in the game. Um, yeah. So if. If there's so it's it's just the interaction of a very few fine forces. So you have the disease. Let's say the disease is, is really the nature of evil. Then you have fire, which inherently is not good or bad. Fire can be good, can be bad. You have water, same thing. Could be, can be good, can be bad. Now doing, Chad, something you probably don't know about game development, but the hardest thing in game development uh, is water. Like water is the bane of game developers and the dream because water is like this. It's, it's this thing that's amorphous and yet solid, and it's really hard to render well in real time for games. So, like, there are various third-party programs out there that do water fairly well. Like, you could do ripples if you're walking through the water and stuff like that, but, like, water is notoriously difficult to do well in games. Or, or 3D, uh, or, or, like, movies, you know, with virtual production. Um, and so, like, I hope that there could be a flood at some point, but, like, doing a flooding game development and it has to it has to be a cinematic basically because you can't there's so many particles and there's so much like especially if you want that flood to actually uh change the objects and the actors and the things that are going on in the game um there are so many particles and things that are that are going on it's it's like way too performance intensive like your frame rate would drop to like a crawl uh and that's why you know you if you see flood um Okay, there we go. Now, I, I unbugged myself there. <laughs> Man, these things still haven't grown? Oh, that's because they're on fire and they're diseased. Oh, that's not so good. Actually, this is the first time I've tested burning. That doesn't look so good, right? I, I've got to I've gotta obviously approve that. It looks like a chimney stack or something. This is the first time I've tested growing foliage being on fire. I have no idea like how 
it was going to interact. Um, yeah, I, I just hadn't tested it before, but um, yeah. <laughs> All I see across the chat is uh, Chad taking over. <laughs> so, so Chad, the, the problem is my audience is not typical. Uh, sorry, my audience is not used to the level of interaction that we have within TLC. And uh, yeah, so I want I want to get it there. <laughs> like I want I want people who are introverted to be uh, excited to talk about these ideas and these uh, you know things that we're we're doing. Um, yeah, but there's there's such a like the amount of chatter on PVK's channel about these ideas compared to the amount of channel within like game development on game development. It's like it's night and day. Like the game developers are just introverted. Like this. This variable is not, is, you know, or this thing is not working. And, and then, you know. <laughs> so, so that's my point in doing the live stream because you got all these game developers who are motivated to make games. And my sense of it is like they have no idea why they're motivated to create a game. And, and because they have no idea why they're motivated to create a game, they're going to create a simulacrum. They're going to create an exact copy of, some, or not an exact copy. But like they're just gonna mirror whatever's already out there, and then no one's gonna care because it's the same thing that's out there. In order to be an indie game dev, to be an indie game dev, you truly need to do something at least moderately original. And, and in order to do something that's moderately original, okay, I guess you can you can have a lot of artistic types. They have the idea, and they don't really reflect like I'm doing on why they have the idea. Like Pica I don't think Picasso's like looking at his art and being like, "This is why I'm making this kind of art." I don't think Picasso did that. However. I think in game development, we have to be a little bit more deliberate than that because it is game development is is a far closer approximation to that entirety of the experience called life than something like a painting. Um, and, and so because of that, there, it's, it has to be a much more conscious like head head centric versus heart centric endeavor. Um, the heart's there. And that's really what I'm going for is like I'm trying to create that communication between this and and the heart because it's like you here's another way of thinking about it this character right here that's that's consciousness you know that's emblematic symbolic of the head the entire world here it's still the character it's still the character it's symbolic of the heart and so that that necessary shepherding or that necessary stewarding uh well that's that's our life like that's literally our life it's like who do you want to be you cannot change your habits and your structures that make up your reality. Um, and, and that's within the confines of your mind, but it's not just within the confines of your mind because it plays itself out in the physical world. Um, but so, so and, and the reason I, I'm so drawn to game development, this is me self-reflecting, but I think it's the same reason that other people are drawn to game development is because they have the opportunity of realizing that uh, mind to heart connection and, and instantiating that in a much smaller, you know, way uh, compared to the real world. Now, obviously, they're they're taking their imagination, they're bringing it into reality through through the game, and I think that's you know phenomenal. Um, and I obviously uh, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't love the imagination, if I didn't think games were good. But anyone who says that a that a good game or great game is just for entertainment, I I think they're wrong. Like straight up, I think they're wrong. I think the the great games imprint themselves on our hearts i think they change us the same way the same way any experience that we have in our lives that taught us something and and when i say taught us something i don't mean this like i don't sometimes it's this but but you know the the true wisdom the true teaching the true learning that's when the entirety of your being is permanently altered in let's say a positive direction and and then we go back to the quality question because Obviously, some things are are better than others, and that really is the nature of our life. Like that's the whole reason that we live is that it's a journey. Um, I gotta plant more seeds, or else everything's gonna be dead. So let's, uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's plant some seeds. And I'm not getting much power for my staff because uh, there was something that ran across the screen. Yes, so Chad, you haven't been following my devlog series, which is all of like 40 minutes, by the way. Like you could watch all the, all the episodes in, in like two times speed in 20 minutes. Um, but the thing that ran across the screen is the instantiation of evil, which is the spirit. 
Uh, so that that's the episode that that was the last episode in the deadline. Oh, oh! Did you hear that? That was Neil talking to himself. Wait, wait. Let me try it again. This land is still burning. This land is still burning. No, it's not. It's diseased. I need to troubleshoot that too. This land is still burning. No, it's not. Well, I don't see any. I don't see any embers on that land. This land is burning. No, it's nah. Okay. I know. I know it's still burning. Okay. Yep. I know you're kind of manic, Chad, but uh, but you you are a explorer, a seeker. Um, anyway, so I I think I've I've said uh, I think I've said everything that I really want to say about uh, education and art. Well, okay, no, I, I've said all I wanted to say at this point about art. <laughs> How do I tie this back to education? So the next, I think it's about five live streams I have planned. I want to delve deeper into what education is really. Because, you know, the next, the next one, um, it's a criticism of copying the next uh, live stream, the next thing I have planned. Uh, education as copying. So if you remember, if you think back to education from like, let's say 1900s, it was like... It, 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 you can even see this in in the Simpsons, you know, in the 80s and 90s, where where Bart is writing on the on the board. He's like, like I will not, da, 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 whatever that is, on the intro. On he's just copying it over and over and over, and and so that that sort of repetition was the the foundation stone of education. And we don't really do that anymore. We don't do that re repetition in education, uh, and to some extent, I think that's good. But it also is necessary to, like before, okay, so let's go back 500 years. If you were a cobbler, it's 500 years, a cobbler is a shoemaker. So the way you started your, your education is you were like 12 years old and you are going to apprentice to a master cobbler, like a, a dude who's been making shoes for 20, 30 years, like a long time. Maybe only 10 years you're a master, but you know, it's a long time. And so you would watch this master cobbler make shoes you'd watch you watch and maybe you assist on like basic things and over time you get better and better at assisting to the point where you are making your own shoe and then he is watching and correcting you um and so education there there is a there is a a copying aspect to education there is an aspect of education where you're just copying what someone else has done or at least attempting to emulate it in whatever way um, you you know in the best way you possibly can and that that sort of pattern begins to imprint itself on your heart so it's it's deliberate copying here that imprints itself here and it's the same thing with like you start to play basketball let's say or you start playing soccer or whatever like you're copying the masters and then but at some point you get to the point where you can't copy anymore like you get you get to the point where and that's where I felt like in, in the series that I made. So I made this Let's Build the RPG series. And by the 70th, 70th episode or so, like my heart was no longer in it because I'm like, I think it's, well, A, I wanted to start making this game. But B, I felt like if people really followed the series and got to this point, like they're ready to start doing their own thing. They're ready to go beyond copying. And that's really, so my heart started leaving the series. Um, and, and that's where I wanted to do something new. But that's also the inspiration for these live streams and this series because we we need to get into what makes a great game to tie it back to that because it's it's one thing so if you do the series then if you want to learn how to make a game the best way to start is you go with someone who knows more and and is a good educator now i am the furthest thing from a master in unreal engine i'm you know i i would say i'm an intermediate at this point, because I've been doing it about three years. Um, however, I will say that I'm a master educator. And now that's that's a bold statement. It's not a humble statement, but I'm all I can tell you is that I have years and years of educating people, uh, educating smart people about very sophisticated things. And I know that's not humble and Lord forgive me, um, but that, that really is, I would say my best skill. Um, so the question is, um, what is the question? The, the The question I had with the series was, could I teach people? And and I felt in some regard that the 
intermediate level of knowledge that I had, that it was just at an intermediate stage, was actually better for for teaching beginners than someone who has really advanced knowledge. Because what you find is someone with really advanced knowledge, they, they make assumptions about what the beginner knows and what they don't know. And I, I think in the series that I was, I was close enough to the source, I was only like two years um, or a year and a half from being a beginner that I was like, I, I think I can present this in such a way that is accessible to true beginners. But by the by the end of the series, by like episode 70, like I mentioned, I was like, no, 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 I, I gotta, I gotta like concentrate on learning again, because I wanted to make a real game. And that's what this is an exploration of is, uh, you know, like, how, how do I go from intermediate to mastery, mastery, that, that really is the question. And in order to be a master at something, whether it's a cobbler, soccer player, basketball player, whatever, um, you need not hear but here in your heart, in, in the totality of your being, let's say, you need to instantiate a very close ideal, whatever the pattern of the ideal is. We talked about the mountain. Whatever that ideal, let's say, whatever that ideal Chad is, that ideal Ricardo, that ideal Bruce Wayne. Does the ideal Bruce Wayne have $10 billion, $100 billion? The ideal Elon Musk. Who is the ideal Elon I'm sure that the ideal Elon is not the Elon of today, but <laughs> he, he would disagree and say, I don't know what he would say to that. Anyway, um, the, the, that's the question I want to explore because, yeah, it, it's a far deeper question than like, how do I make this Niagara system? It's the question of what constitutes a great shoe? What constitutes a great shot in basketball? What constitutes, you know, a, a great pianist, a great uh, violinist, uh, you know, that's the question. Like, what constitutes a great game? And then can that pattern that makes up the great game, can that be instantiated in the game developer? And I think it can. And I'm not saying that I'll get there. But what I am saying is it's a worthwhile target. It's the worthwhile top of the mountain to aim for because I think the endeavor of simply aiming for that ideal is inevitably going to have ripple effects that if, if you, so here's another way of thinking about it. If you aim for excellence in one aspect of your life, could be anything, but if you aim for excellence in just one thing that you really care about, it could be your marriage, could be being a parent. If you aim for the excellence in the one thing, what happens is that pattern of excellence starts rippling out in everything you do and you get more excellent at 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 the problem of excellence more generally <laughs> and i'm not saying i'm excellent at any of those <laughs> but, I, but what i am saying is to the extent that i have aimed for excellence it has helped me in more aspects of my life than just whatever one thing i was aiming for in excellence um because so you could say there's a pattern of excellence in game development. You could say there's a pattern of excellence in brushing your teeth. I used that analogy earlier. Um, but there's a pattern of just general excellence. Like that that exists, you know? Like the, ex the idea of excellence as such exists, you know? Um, so if you believe that the idea of excellence exists, if so here's, but even before that, if you don't believe that excellence exists, like why do anything? Like why, why do anything? Like why brush your teeth? Like why, you know, it, and if anything, maybe it's because the, the consequences of not believing in excellence are awful. Uh, <laughs> so if you don't believe that you can have excellent dental hygiene, then you see how your teeth are going to be in two years, you know, like the, the inevitable organic biological consequences of failing to aim for excellence. <laughs> oh man, this is where I'm, you know, most people are going to stop into the stream and be like, this is a game development stream. Like, what, what are you talking about? And that's what I'm talking about. It's like, what makes something excellent? And right now this world, this is not excellent. Everything's dead. <laughs> I am failing in my endeavor to protect and steward my garden here. <laughs> uh, you know why? Because the ideas are more important.
Oh, let's let's cure. Uh, let's banish the darkness. Um, so, Chad, this is for this is for you. Um, I want to cast magic missile because I'm fighting the darkness. Yeah, I'm banishing the. Uh oh. Oh no. No, this darkness. Let's fight. Yeah. Getting rid of that darkness. That's good. Okay. There's still more darkness, I think. So one one thing I talked about with uh, Ricardo is that these like. So so this was actually uh, a bug. Uh, where like if if I have too many overlapping decals in a specific location, what happens is this like like just absolute dark spot on the world. And I was thinking about that. I was like, I don't know how to solve the overlapping decal problem. If anyone has any ideas on how to solve the overlapping decal problem, I'm I'm all ears. But I don't know how to solve that problem. But uh, and then I was thinking like, oh, whenever and and this is this gets to the excellence thing. Whenever you have a problem that's insurmountable, it's always an opportunity. So, so I had another problem, which is I wanted to make foliage grow, but every time uh, I, I started, you know, setting up in the game to make foliage grow, it's like crazy performance intensive because I'm adjusting the transforms in real time of hundreds and hundreds of foliage instances. And my frame rate is like, eh, eh, just coming to a crawl. So, so whenever you have that kind of problem, so this is what I'm talking about. The, the meta excellence, let's say, because if you can get a frame in, if you can get into a frame of mind where the frame of mind is, oh, I meant to have this problem. Like this is a good problem to have. Then if, if you believe that everything happens for a reason, now most, many people don't, but I do. Uh, but if you, then, then if you have a problem, then it's like, okay, so what can I learn from this problem? Like, how can I do or how can I do jujitsu on this problem? Like you take the strength of the problem and you flip it on its head and say like, ah, I got you now problem, I got you. <laughs> oh, that was that was all distorted. Let's do that again. <laughs> That's still distorted. Man, I gotta, I gotta figure out what's going on. Um, but yeah, so how do you do jujitsu on the problem to basically uh, turn it to a, into an advantage? And the way I was able to do that for the growing problem is I was like, okay, so I have this other problem, which is I, I want the player in the game to always be doing other things. Like I want them, um, you know, within, within real-time strategy, you have this idea of like clicks per minute or uh, action, APM, actions per minute. So like the best players in StarCraft, they have like 200 actions per minute, which you think about that and you're doing three and a half actions a second. Like that's nuts. Like that's insane. But the best games, like... You're always doing something and thinking about the next step. Or, or in chess, it's like you're thinking 12 steps down the line or 15. I don't know how many steps, but it's a crazy number of steps. And so so I have this thought like, okay, so how do I solve the growing problem? And then how do I encourage the player to like plant and then go do other things? Or plant, water, go do other things. And it's like, oh, I'm only going to make stuff grow if it's not within camera view of the player. So that really is, that was the jujitsu of flipping it on its head. It was like, okay. If, if I can make stuff grow without actually having to render it on the screen, it took, and so instead of having to do this every single tick, I could just do boop, and then, you know, suddenly. And from the player perspective, they're not looking at it, and then I don't have to do growing because, but then from a gameplay mechanic standpoint, it's perfect because they want to go and they want to do other things anyway. Um, so that that was an example of, like, flipping the problem on its head and, and uh, yeah, anyway. So... Uh, let's see. You know, um, I think I'm probably going to conclude this stream because I think this was a good intro into my thinking. And, um, we are uh, going to have another stream. It's not going to be next Saturday because I'm not able to make it next Saturday. But it's almost New Year's next Saturday. But in 2024, every Saturday morning, I think... Uh, so the next stream is going to be, and this one I'm doing for Bruce, the next stream is going to be... Two weeks. Oh, man. Forgot about that. There we go. Now we're back to normal. So I accidentally made my play clip buttons. Uh, yeah, I gotta adjust that. What about this one? Does this work? Two weeks. Yeah, that one's fine. Two weeks. When's the next stream? Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Now I'm just, uh, Two weeks. you know, <laughs> now I'm just uh, playing around. Um, yeah, so I'll see everybody in two weeks. And uh, 
I think I'll end the stream with um, a little music. And by the way, I, I will give extra points. I don't know how I'll reward anyone, but I will, I will give anyone who is able to find this music online, where I got this music from, um, I'll give them something. Extra points. Kudos. Street cred. Something metaphysical. Because the metaphysical giving is the greater reward than the physical giving. It is better to give than to receive. So I want to metaphysically give my thanks over to you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'll do this again in two weeks and hopefully I will have more to show game development wise. But honestly, I'm probably just going to be rambling most of the time in these streams. So if it's not for you, if you are aiming for excellence in a better way, well, first of all, if you're aiming for excellence in a better way, I'd, I'd love to hear that better way. Um, but uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk more about education. We're gonna talk more uh, future streams about quality. What is the nature of quality? About a about a month ago, I read uh, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, and Chad, uh, you know, in terms of what we're talking about within the corner. Zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance, it's, it's a perfect encapsulation of it. And, and I understand why Sevilla, uh, why Sevilla is all over um, Zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance, because it's, it's, I'm, I should have read it right away, and I only read it a month ago. And um, I, I would say it's probably in my top five books now, because it, it, it nails the problem that the corner is trying to solve. It, and it, it, I wouldn't say it nails the solution, but it is at least pointing the solution in the right direction. Um, so I highly recommend to anybody who wants a book recommendation, uh, read Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. It came out in 1974. And uh, we will get into it and why I think it's important in relation to game development. Because you could call it Zen and the Art of Game Development. And the same ideas would apply, 100%. So I will see y'all next time, and I catch y'all on the flip side.